This might just be our craziest video yet because, well, today we've spent quite a lot of money. But let me start from the beginning. Who here likes charcuterie boards? Don't raise your hand. What are you? <laughs> Well, I know I do. And today we're taking charcuterie boards to the next level. I don't know why, but I feel like online I've seen charcuterie board this, charcuterie board that, charcuterie. People call them all sorts of stuff. But I wanna really take a deep dive today into charcuterie boards. It all depends on how seriously you wanna take them. And if you know me, you know that I take food very seriously. But I really wanted to think outside the box today. So we're gonna do something really fun. We're gonna start out simple by making a $1 charcuterie board. That's right. One dollar. Now, come on, please don't come after me if you calculate it out to the exact gram and it's a dollar and one cent, but you get the idea. We are going to try to nail that one dollar board. And after that, can you guess what's gonna happen? Once we've completed that, we are going to add a zero, which will move us on up to a $10 charcuterie board. And you know, you can start getting a little bit more creative there, but again, you're pretty limited because you're dealing with a lot of pretty expensive things in a charcuterie board. Think cheese, meats, nice crackers, maybe some berries or fresh fruit. Things can get pricey, but can you guess what's gonna happen next? We're gonna add a another zero and doing a hundred dollar charcuterie board. And yeah, I know that might sound crazy and it's gonna give us some good flexibility to really start putting in some unique ingredients. But we are not stopping there because we're gonna add another zero after that and go to a thousand dollar charcuterie board. Boom. Yes, it sounds crazy, but we're gonna do it. We have to. Because don't you wanna know what can a thousand dollar charcuterie board look like? I mean, come on, the possibilities are probably endless. But here's the kicker. We're not gonna stop there. Can you guess what we're gonna do? Yeah. We're gonna add another zero because today we're making a $10,000 charcuterie board. Boom. Okay, so I know that sounds crazy, but to start, let's go do that $1 charcuterie board because out of all of them, maybe besides the $10,000 one, that's actually the one I'm most excited about. Let's head on over to 7-Eleven. So we are off to 7-Eleven right now, and I just can't think of any better place to get that $1 charcuterie board. Now, I don't know what we're gonna find there. I really don't. But I just feel like if there's gonna be a place we can build a decent charcuterie board, it's gonna be there. They got the cheapest slice of pizza around, and it's actually not a terribly bad slice. You know, it's not great, but it's okay. But the reality is that 7-Eleven has pretty much everything. So let's go see what we can find. You guys, we made it. 7-Eleven has arrived. So the key here is gonna be finding stuff that we could actually use in a charcuterie board. So what exactly the heck can we use from 7-Eleven? Look at all those noodles. I'm a big noodle guy myself. Huge noodle guy right here. I think we maybe go with some sliced pepper jack. This is gonna go on our $10 charcuterie board though. This is a little more pricey, okay? We're looking for lower budget stuff for the $1 board. For our $1 board, this is an absolute must. Jack's Links, baby. This is it. All right, so now we need saltines, which obviously these are our low budget cracker right here, okay? This is our $1 cracker. Also, I have something really special I wanna show you with, uh, Oreos, it's one of the coolest hacks I've ever learned, so I'm gonna bring these back too. Last thing we need is our meat for the $1 board. I think we're gonna take it out of a Lunchable. I just feel like that's a pro move right there. This is a good spread right here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one. This is a fully empty saltine well, box? Yeah. They sent you this? Yeah. <laughs> you better have gotten a refund. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> maybe I will. Huge success there at 7-Eleven. Now we are back to the kitchen to make all these boards. Well, boom. Now, as you can see, we got some pretty great things that we're gonna start out on that first board with. There's nothing like some good pepper jack cheese, a couple of premium saltines. Now, what I will say is that guy in that store, what a sweet guy. We didn't catch this on video, but this guy was chilling behind the counter, waiting for people to check out or ask questions when we asked him about the saltines. He quite literally got up and started running around the corner as if he was doing the Boston Marathon. I personally appreciated the hustle and I actually told him to stop running. But he also was just obsessed with telling us the story about how they dropped off a box of saltines to him last week that was fully sealed but completely completely empty. Yeah, that's the one. This is a fully empty saltine well, box? Yeah. So I guess just know that there's a really good story behind these saltines. Now, honestly, I wasn't gonna do a $1 charcuterie board without some beef jerky, and I almost went for a Slim Jim, but Jack's Links was just a little step up, and I felt like we could splurge a little bit. As long as we can work it into the budget, right? And last but not least, something we actually couldn't find at 7-Eleven, but found somewhere else, we got Easy Cheese. Because isn't this what dreams are made of? You might've seen me pick up some Oreos at 7-Eleven. So to start off, I got a little trick here for you. To start, we're gonna take out one of our Oreos, and put just a little bit of that easy cheese on top. I know this is fully unrelated to a charcuterie board, but believe it or not, this tastes exactly like a cheesecake. I know, it sounds completely insane, but it's actually shockingly good. Well, let's get focused again and start building this $1 board. Let's break down that $1 board. Now we probably all loved Lunchables back in the day and I just figured we could get some good stuff out of this thing right here, but I haven't had a Capri Sun in so long. Out of here, I think the real main thing we're gonna get is these pieces of pepperoni that are really only a couple cents and can help us get a nice beefy meaty foundation. So let's just lay a few of those down on our cutting board in a nice little formation here. 
Keep in mind, all these boards are gonna be really nice and abstract, so here's a nice start. Now second is we're gonna go ahead and open up our cheese stick and jerky, which let's face it, aren't the best quality in the world. And we can't use all of it because we'll go over budget here. But I'm gonna cut some really nice bits of this beef here which will give another texture to our meat section. And then I'll cut the cheese into nice little cubes that you can pick up and eat by hand. But again, not all of it, because we can't go over budget here. That's looking pretty good to me for now. Next, of course, our saltines. When you think about it, saltines are pretty much the cheapest cracker out there. So to hit that dollar mark, I'm gonna lay a few of these out across the board and we're not gonna break the bank. Let's just get these in a really nice formation right around our board to make things start looking a little bit pretty. Now our charcuterie board's starting to look professional. But what is a charcuterie board without a few olives? Especially ones that you can't even get out of the can. That's not the nicest looking selection of olives I've ever seen, but it's gonna do the job here. I'm gonna take my tweezers and lay just a few of my olives out on the board here, because each individual one we put down is probably a little less than a cent. So again, that's why I couldn't splurge for full olives. They just brought us slightly over budget. Now to finish things off, we want a little bit of easy cheese to really make it nice and easy to dip those crackers in. I'll put a nice little mound on my board and maybe just do a couple of those to spice things up a little bit. Whenever you're plating, always remember, plate in odd numbers. So I'm happy with those three splotches of easy cheese, which bring us to right around $1. Take a look at this board before we dive in. All right, well, to dive in, here's what I would do. I'd probably take one of these saltines, put a little bit of easy cheese on there and spread it nice and around so that we get that evenly covered. Then I'd add a few olives, just for a little bit of extra salt here, with one or two cubes of cheese. I'd top it off with a nice piece of pepperoni and I'd call it a day. Keep in mind, you don't want to be one of those people that takes all of one certain thing and puts them on your cracker and then there's none of that left in the charcuterie board. That's basic, simple charcuterie etiquette. Let's give this a try. I'm not gonna recommend the $1 charcuterie board to anybody out there. It simply just isn't good. But you know what is good is the saltines challenge. And hey, I just wanna show you these superpowers. So here we go. I can eat these for days. Oh, it's not even difficult for me. I can just eat them for days. Now for our $10 charcuterie board, we're gonna step it up a little bit so you can see we're kind of up in our cracker game here, right? Now I know, Ritz don't seem like the most luxurious cracker out there, but I actually don't think they're all that bad. They have a lot of those qualities that you'd be looking for in a cracker. They got just the right amount of salt, they're light and airy while also very crispy and have that crunch every time. And perhaps most importantly, when it comes to cheese, they're the perfect vehicle for putting a nice piece of cheese on. I'm not really sure why they have those holes through them, but I kind of dig it. So to start, let's lay down our Ritz crackers. We can definitely give it a little pizzazz and make a few little shapes with our cracker layers here. Why not keep things interesting, right? Next, we're gonna go with a fresh stack of saltines because again, I know saltines are a pretty dry cracker, but they're cost effective and can really buff up this charcuterie board if you want them to. Watch me give it a little pizzazz again. Now, of course, our cheese. I'm sure you all remember these really cute wax shaped cheese things. And I know that I was absolutely obsessed with them during my childhood. And I always thought it was cool that they opened up and looked like Pac-Man. Well, let's toss down a few of these things. And we can even make a little tower and leave some in the packaging if we want to. Sometimes that's kind of nice in a charcuterie board. Now the next thing we're gonna do is open up a couple olives from a bag because we've graduated from those pre-cut have olives. And we're now moving on to the big leagues. That's right, we got whole olives. So let's add a couple of those nice and spaced out on our charcuterie board. As you can see, we've rearranged just a tad bit here to make things a little bit nicer looking. But now it's time for a little bit of our pepper jack cheese. Now cheese is where things can start to get really expensive really fast. So we can't go overboard with the cheese here. But to make things look nice, I'm gonna start layering it out on my board, just nice and evenly so that you can easily grab a piece and make a nice cracker out of it. And again, maybe get a little bit of a stack there, some nice height to buff things up a little bit, right? Now, of course, not everyone loves pepper jack, so I'm also gonna do a little bit of regular cheese, which will be cut from this nice, beautiful block of cheddar. You'll notice that as our charcuterie boards step up in value, they'll get closer and closer to the source. Hence, this nice block of cheese that hasn't been cut yet. But I wanna start making it more rustic. So I'm gonna break off nice clumps of this cheese, laying those across my board and getting things really nice and beautiful. You want your guests to see this charcuterie board and be blown away immediately. So make sure you don't hold back when it comes to being creative. But alas, this wouldn't be complete without a nice little spread because we have enough budget now to play around with a bit of a jam. And that's why I have this nice fig spread that evidently has been already dug into and eaten from the store. The $10 charcuterie board, what do you expect? Maybe it's just melted? Yeah, it's just melted. You think? Or? And last but not least, to finish off that $10, we can't forget to put a little bit of meat in here, though we can't afford too much because we really balled out on the cheese there. So I have these nice little petite salamis, which I absolutely love. And I'm gonna lay them right in the middle of my board to finish this $10 charcuterie board off. Take a little bit of our fig spread because why not? And then I'll take a nice little chunk off of my cheddar cheese, place that right in the middle. This time I'm gonna eat my olive on the side because it didn't taste so good last time on the cracker. And I think that's gonna complete it. First, just a little nibble of my baby bell cheese. 
I should really get in the spirit of the $10 charcuterie board, followed of course by a nice rich cracker, very crispy and buttery, topped with a little bit of the fig spread and a tad bit of cheddar cheese. It's a harmony in my mouth. Now for our $100 charcuterie board, this is when we step things up a little bit. This is when we get more outside the box, we get nicer meats, nicer cheeses. This is when things really can start to get spicy. We graduated now from Ritz and we can move on to Triscuits. You get what I mean. But here's one thing that I wanna say. I feel like a good charcuterie board always has some sort of highlight, some sort of centerpiece, let's just say. Well, at least the one I'm about to make is going to. What I have here is a beautiful rabbit and pork cheek terrine from Regalis Foods. You've definitely heard me say their name before and they send me a lot of my higher and more unique foods. But my point here is that this is gonna be kind of the centerpiece for our $100 charcuterie board. Yes, this bad boy right here is gonna run you about 15 bucks, which is a nice chunk, but not too much of the overall price of your charcuterie board. So of course, to start, I'm just gonna gently break this baby open and rest it right down in the center of my board. To start, I'm gonna go in with some dry aged Iberico pork. It's a chorizo sausage that looks amazing. Chorizo is how I should properly say it. I'm gonna chop this bad boy in half and just show you how incredible the inside of this looks like. Now, if we use the whole tube, I can tell you right now, we're gonna go over budget. So I'm gonna go ahead here and just slice some nice, perfect bits of this. Just enough to give us a nice spread on our board. Next, we have some bread that I've flown in from Spain. It smells incredible. I wanna chop it in nice thin little strips here to be able to grab a piece of it and put whatever you'd like on the bread. But I like the idea of leaving it in this whole beautiful baguette. So I'm gonna let this sit right along the outside. Now in my opinion, when you have a nice charcuterie board, you must have some good salmon. And to keep things nice and fancy, why don't we just leave it on the gold tray and let people grab it however they want. Actually, let's make it prettier and place it down in a nice little rustic shredded pile here. Next, I have some spicy Italian salami that I'm gonna lay right up against our chorizo. Layering the salami up against itself like this is always a very simple way to make something look nice and beautiful. Before we put down the rest of that sausage, let's come in with a few bowls that we're eventually gonna fill with some beautiful different things. These will be different little landmarks that we can build around as we finish the rest of our board. And it gives us something good to nestle things up against, giving our board a very full feeling. Next, we're gonna take some cornichons, which are those cute little mini pickles that you've seen, and we'll pile a few of these into one of our bowls, as those will really help to elevate just about any charcuterie board out there. They're also pretty cute too. And they come with these nice little sweet onion bulbs. Next, some sopra setta salami, because we really gotta go full of Italian for a little bit here. This is a much more meat-centric charcuterie board, but we'll get to the other things in just a moment. Nestled right in the back here, I'm gonna add a little bit of sliced cheddar cheese, and then I'm gonna break this beautiful blue cheese and rest it down somewhere in the back of my board. Now, I don't know if you heard me before, but like I said, we've graduated now from Ritz crackers. So here's when I'm gonna start the spread of our crackers. I'm sure everybody who's ever been to a party, like I said, guys, I party, so I've been to a party or two, has probably seen these crackers. And the thing is, they're not actually half bad. So we'll spread them all around our board, really making sure that we take up some of that extra blank space. Now, the next thing we're gonna work on is prosciutto. And trust me, what we're gonna have in a bit is gonna be a heck of a lot nicer. But this is imported from Italy, and it's pretty dang good stuff. To step it up, however, we're gonna be wrapping a few nice pieces of melon in this prosciutto and dropping those down on our charcuterie board. It's time now to put down some of our nice breadsticks shipped straight from Italy. And I'm not gonna lie, those actually took a shocking ding to the wallet, given that you'd think they're just bread but they are after all from Italy, so here you have them. Now, another unique thing I'm gonna add here is some chocolate, which yeah, I'm sure you've seen people add chocolate to a charcuterie board before, but I just think this makes a nice little touch if you add this to the board. Now next, I'm gonna go in with some olives. All right, I do this. I got it. Finally got it open. We're stepping up our olive game a little bit here now with some marinated Spanish mixed olives. What's great about these is that they have pits inside them. So it makes it nice and super awkward for you when you're at a party and trying to eat an olive. And then you just have this terribly ugly pit in your hand and don't know what to do with it. Also, you can see there's some nice bay leaves inside it to really kind of marinate them and make them taste fantastic. Now to finish things off a little bit, I figured our $100 board deserved a little bit of fruit. Not a lot, but a little bit of fruit. So I'll go in with a few of the main fruits. Nothing super crazy, but enough to just spice things up a little bit. And like I said, we graduated from Ritz and moved on to Triscuits with this one. Add a bunch of Triscuits to your $100 board and call it a day. Now, instead of just taking a bite out of our $100 charcuterie board and then putting that one away, we're now going to build on that to get a $10,000 charcuterie board. And next up is $1,000, which is honestly where things get a little bit crazy. And also when my credit card bill starts to get a little bit sketchy. Now to start, I'm gonna do something really cool. This beautiful piece of cheese right here is a triple creme brie shipped all the way from France. I actually wanna be really delicate with this thing because this bad boy right here is gonna run us about 100 bucks. I have pre-made puff pastry. And when I open this up, 
I should be able to gently roll it out and then put my brie right inside. I'm sure you've heard of baked brie before and that's exactly what you're gonna be looking at with this. Now luckily, making a baked brie is actually quite simple. We're gonna rest this down on the bottom of our puff pastry, fold it up, trim around the pastry to make sure we don't have too much excess, and then very simply press and wrap up that brie. Once it's all wrapped up like this, we're gonna place our brie on a baking sheet and paint it in a nice layer of egg wash just to get that beautiful golden brown crust and color that we're all looking for. And once it's been fully coated in that egg wash, we're simply gonna place this in the oven at about 375 Fahrenheit until golden brown. Now here's our next little thing. This is a Cetra Caviar, and this bad boy right here is gonna run you about $200. It may be kind of hard to see, but what we have here are some beautiful, beautiful eggs. Typically, you're not supposed to dig in with anything other than a mother of pearl spoon, but I'm just gonna take a slight dig out of here just to kind of show you how beautiful this is. Caviar can up any charcuterie board. It's salty, fatty, and can go with so many different things. So we'll place this right by our charcuterie board and know that this will be one of the stars of our $1,000 charcuterie board. Now what we have here is the butt of a prosciutto, which we've shaved a bunch off of to get some nice big pieces here. You can just see how absolutely gorgeous this is. And for an $1,000 charcuterie board, you can't just be going out and buying pre-sliced prosciutto. So I'm gonna rest this off to the side of our board just to really show where we got all this from. And then we can lay some beautifully sliced prosciutto all up against this leg. This gives off that really fresh aspect of everything. And it's something that I absolutely love when I see a charcuterie board. Now with our bread, I also wanna leave this nice and rustic. So let's leave the whole piece here this time. Next, I've got this gorgeous Scottish smoked salmon from iGourmet that I'm gonna go ahead and cut around with my knife, ultimately peeling back what is beautiful, beautiful salmon flown across the world. I'll layer some of these up right next to my prosciutto. And I can't help but salivate when looking at and smelling the fatty, delicious salmon in front of me. That's gonna be good. What I have right here is Iberico chorizo, pre-sliced and simply the best of the best. It's so delicate and fatty that it's almost breaking as I pull it out of its container here. And the very best way to describe this is that it's melt in your mouth salon. Now I know this may sound absurd, but what you're looking at right here is $300 honey, and that's why I'm not gonna use all of it. This is called Manuka honey, and I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but believe it or not, it's not even the most expensive honey out there. And just wait till you see what we have for that $10,000 board. Honey goes so incredibly well with something like a charcuterie board, so it excites me. Now again here from iGourmet, I have a Kerrygold aged cheddar, and it also has some Irish whiskey in there. Let's peel off that external wrapping and lay this down. Next, we're gonna color things up a little bit because you know how much I love color in anything with food. So I'll lay this wine cheese across the table right in the corner here. Now I got some olives from La Tienda. I think you probably remember when I used one of their full Cinco Jotas Jamon Iberico legs. Cutting that thing was absolutely incredible. And I'll pour these Spanish olives into a nice bowl and let those sit right in the middle of my board. Now this might not look like it's open, but believe it or not, it actually is. And it has an almost a jello-like top. This is a little foie gras pate that I'll place right in the back of my board here. Now, of course, let's start laying down a few crackers. What you see here have apricot, pistachio, and sunflower inside them. Into our olives, I'm also gonna add a few chilies, calabrese chili peppers, to be precise. Then a nice beautiful hunk of focaccia right in the back of my board here. More crackers that we've sent straight from Italy. And you know what, you have to excuse them for breaking a few because they came from a long journey. And a nice little bowl of Marcona almonds, which I'll place just next to our caviar here. What we have here, also from La Tienda, is Iberico acorn fed chorizo, which when I pop off the cap, looks pretty incredible. To spice and color up the board, I'm gonna put a few tomatoes that have absolutely gorgeous colors and are heirloom tomatoes I got from a nearby farm. And I'll finish with this incredible looking cheese that's been coated in all sorts of gorgeous herbs. But again, I wanna break this hunk of cheese and make it nice and rustic. Keep things so incredibly beautiful across our charcuterie board. Now for the $10,000 board, let's step it up and build upon what we have around us. We've added in a third cutting board in the middle of this whole thing here. And to start, I'm gonna cut this first big thing open. This is from Regalis Foods, and I'll give you a little hint as to what it is. They always find me crazy, crazy things, but what's in here is very exciting. I'll slowly open it, and you can try to guess as I start to open it. But what I'll say is that what's in here will make any charcuterie board incredible. We have a full frame of black locust honeycomb. And this right here is the start of our $10,000 charcuterie charcuterie board. This right here is a showstopper in and of itself. And I'll prop this up at the back of my cutting board as our little foundation for everything. Now, of course, I did not forget about that amazing baked brie that's in the oven. But since we're building on all the boards, it doesn't really matter at this point when this thing falls into everything. For now, I'm just gonna gently slide this off and place it in the middle of my cutting board. I can feel this on the edges and tell you right now that this thing is oozing with delicious cheese. Now next, I wanna do prosciutto and melon, but not just any prosciutto and not just any melon. Our quote unquote prosciutto will be Cinco Jotas already carved ham. And again, if you've seen my Cinco Jotas Jamon Iberico video, you know how incredible and amazing this acorn 
corn fed hammocks. La Tienda sends me all of this stuff straight from Spain in these beautiful mountains where the pigs are raised and grown. But with every nice bite of this, you're often looking at something like $25, maybe even more. And lucky for you, we have quite a few of them. What we have right here is a Japanese melon. And when I cut into it, immediately I should smell that bright, vibrant deliciousness. I had to go to a pretty random store pretty much in the middle of nowhere to get this thing. So I truly hope I'll be able to tell the difference in flavor between this and a regular melon that I can buy up the road. This will be our version of prosciutto and melon. Next, we have a few of these incredible quail eggs, which I've already hard boiled for three and a half minutes and are quite delicious. I thought those would be a really nice touch for a charcuterie bowl. Now here from iGourmet, we have white sturgeon caviar, which will run you about 250 bucks, but is quite delicious if you ask me. I know it seems like a lot for a pretty small amount, but I'm gonna rest this right up top near the corner near my melon. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen Mr. Beast's video, but these are little candied green peaches, each of which can run you up to $500 for that tiny little peach. It's sometimes kind of hard to believe. Now we'll go down with this shockingly expensive, but really delicious looking baby corn, a bunch of cans of this Spanish octopus marinated in olive oil, which is wrapped nicer than any canned good I've ever seen. Let me just open it up to let you see what's inside. I've never seen octopus like this, but boy, oh boy, do I like it. Then of course, I'll go on with some black truffle cheese, which I'll cut straight down the middle to get that rustic look yet again. But geez, we're running out of space here. Some gorgeous white truffle honey and black truffle pate. These crackers from Italy that are called air bread, that just looks so amazingly fancy and more so expensive that we had to get them for our charcuterie board. These sauteed Marcona almonds, which I'll sprinkle just around the board to get that nice rustic look again. You know almonds are expensive when they come in a jar like this. Some duck foie gras mousse, which I'll place here in the back. And of course, a beautiful nice baguette from a local Italian bakery, which we've almost entirely run out of space for. Some European blue cheese wrapped in the most unique setup I've ever seen. Boy, oh boy, is that pungent. And of course, now we need our berries. So why not? sprinkle out a few things like huckleberries, these extraordinarily expensive strawberries called dream berries, and an absolutely absurd selection of cheese, which I'll start to lay out for you now. All right, for my cheeses, what I have right here is an 100% Manchega cheese. This right here, you can see, has been cut from a wheel, and it's entirely sheep's milk. So I'll rest that off right to the side here. Now right here, I have a beautiful goat cheese that's been wrapped in grape leaves and tied up in this nice little bundle. You can see here that I can unwrap the cheese, take off a little piece, and then it's got this beautiful, delicate, delicious flavor. So this too will get placed down right here on the edge. Now here we have some beautiful, very, very fresh figs that I've shipped across the country. And you'll notice that when I split one of these open, they almost have this syrupy honey-like interior. And when you taste them, your mind will be blown. Now I don't wanna say anything weird about this cheese here, but let me just tell you that this is something special. Oh boy. Oh, I feel like I just have to taste it. <laughs> now this is yet another cheese from iGourmet called Humboldt Fog. It's got one of those almost sharp smells when you bring it up to your nose and you can see how much mold is on the edge here. But this again is an extremely special cheese that I can't wait to cut into. What you're looking at right here is a really, really unique cheddar cheese. And I picked it because it's very interesting how it has these lines of mold that's completely edible and this bark that's also apparently got quite a lot of flavor. You know, I just figured this would be a unique cheese to add to the mix. This right here is probably the most unique bit of cheese that I've got. And as I spin it around, you can see that it's almost got these grill marks on the bottom. But again, this bad boy made quite the dent into my bank account. Now what we have here again is from La Tienda, pretty much all my Jamon Iberico typically is. And it's a Cinco Jotas 100% Iberico pork loin. Let me pop off the cap and see what this beautiful baby looks like. Wow, I have to say, this looks absolutely stunning. But be careful, because a couple of these bad boys and you don't have any more spending money for the year. Next, I have a bunch of amazing jams from Regalis Foods. The first is a Saskatoon berry jam. I've never even heard of that, but it smells just like blueberry. Next, I have a Hascap berry preserve, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm not really sure how to describe the smell of this one other than the fact that it smells incredible. Now I have a low bush blueberry preserve with the most incredible wild blueberry smell I have ever experienced. And next, a sea buckthorn preserve, something I've had in the past and is incredibly delicious. It's very tart and very, very unique. Then a cloudberry preserve, incredibly sweet and incredibly delicious. And last but not least, we have a wild huckleberry jam. And again, I don't know if any of you have seen that Mr. Beast video where he has an $100,000 sundae, but each spoonful of this is about $50. So I guess it's up to the person eating the charcuterie board of how much you actually consume. But this whole bowl right here is a few hundred dollars. Next, what we have right here is a dry cured Mouillard duck prosciutto. When I cut into this beautiful thing, you can see how incredible it looks with that perfect balance of fat to duck. 
Let's lay that right down in the middle of our board. I know we haven't gotten to highlight many of these products up close, but let me show you how luxurious this honey is. Like I said, this honey will run you about 300 bucks, and even the box alone looks expensive. But that's why it goes in our $10,000 charcuterie board. This honey is so, so thick. Not quite as thick as me. It's unbelievable. Next, we have a Regalis Foods black truffle balsamic. It's been barrel aged for 18 years in Modena, Italy. You can't get better than that. Now from iGourmet, I have all these dried limes, oranges, and lemons, which are absolutely beautiful, and which you can fully eat and crunch down on. Now I'm sure you all remember when I opened an entire 82 pound Parmigiano Reggiano cheese wheel in my video recently. That was certainly a heck of a lot of fun. But of course, we still have lots of Parmesan cheese left and we can't let it go to waste. So let's add this to our charcuterie board. This right here is a couple hundred dollars worth of Parmesan and we're gonna add a few more hunks as well. Now, we really have a lot more things. We have breadsticks straight from Italy, extremely nice mustards, more chorizo, all sorts of beautiful loaves of bread, and so much fruit. And let's not forget this absolutely incredible first day of harvest olive oil. I should also mention that a lot of the cheeses here have won massive awards. I mean, this table has easily three to $4,000 worth of cheese on it right here. And I'm not gonna sit you through every single one because we simply can't go through them all. But what's important is that we've officially reached a $10,000 table, and I actually might say a tad bit more than $10,000 since we stacked them on top of the boards behind them. It's truly incredible looking at this massive spread. Okay, so now that we've built out this crazy charcuterie board, I have something extra exciting for today. Now, believe it or not, I actually don't eat a lot of dairy, don't drink a lot of milk anymore. I used to, and who doesn't love chocolate milk? I guzzled through that stuff like crazy. But now that we've made this massive $10,000 charcuterie board, I need some help to eat it. So I've brought in three random subscribers off YouTube. I have never met these people before and they're all really excited to just dive in and try whatever it is they want to try. I'm also really curious because we have a lot of foods here that not only I've never tried but they're gonna have absolutely no idea what they are so it's gonna be really cool to see those reactions. So let me introduce you to Felix, Sage, and Judah. Okay so the first thing I want to say we're wearing masks all that stuff but I do want to say that everyone is vaccinated. So just to be COVID safe, we are being very conscious of that. But with that said, we could not let this stop us from eating the charcuterie board. So what I'm going to do is have each subscriber come up one by one, pick out a couple things, maybe try what they want to try, and then talk a little bit about it. Simple as that. We're going to go ladies first here and let Sage jump in and try what she wants to try. So first of all, Sage, what do you think about this whole spread here? This is like a work of art. I love just looking at everything. It's just like so much to take in. It is, right? And what are your thoughts in general on like a $10,000 shark curry board? Isn't that kind of nuts? That's outrageous. It's insane. It's like food heaven. It's food heaven. I really like that. It's food heaven. Uh, you can grab whatever you'd like. All right, so no pressure. <laughs> this is so much to choose from. You guys are just like waiting patiently over here. I think I want to try the Hamoni Burgo. Yeah, I feel like that's a good call. Okay, so I'll get you some of that. Go for it. I will try the caviar. The no, not the whole thing. <laughs> the boys over here are really jealous, okay? I know you want the whole tin of caviar. You can't have the whole tin of caviar. I'll give you the whole tray of Pomona and Berico. How's awesome. that? Is that a good compromise? <laughs> okay. Good so we talked about these peaches, right? Each one of these yeah. peaches can be up to $500. It's crazy, right? Wow. Grab one of those peaches. When I scrape into the honeycomb, you can see that like immediately all the honey oozes out of there. All right, so dive in here, Sage, and see what's going down. Caviar. What you thinking? It's like a flavor explosion. It's a flavor explosion. A little fatty, right? A little salty. Have you had white surgery caviar or before? Never. No. Do you like it? Or it's, it's really good. It doesn't justify the price, obviously, right? Yeah. For that little thing to be that expensive. But all right, what do you want? What do you want to try next? I definitely want to try the Japanese peach. I feel like everyone's going to want to try the peach. It's super like sweet and like fruity. And the texture is like interesting. Isn't it strange? Yeah. What do you think though? Like, do you like it? I love it. It's peaches. really good, right? Yeah. You love peaches? Mm -hmm. You want to just snag another one? Yeah. You might as well. I, I mean, you're to. here. You might as well, right? All right. So this is Cinco Hotas from Monoberigo. It's all acorn fed. Woo. <laughs> it was, it's really salty, but in a good way. Yeah. But the flavor is just super rich. I find it to be like super, super addicting, actually. I don't know why. Um, You picked out the honey, too. Yeah. Right? I did. The black locust honey from a full honeycomb, right? Which you've never had before. Yeah. It smells almost like stronger than regular honey. Do you get like more floral, like flowery notes to it all or no? That's what I usually kind of... Yeah. Like... Whoa, so good. So good. Um, I want you to try this white charm honey. Smell the cap in there. That's just, insane. Just smell that. Oh, wow. Ooh. Just go for it. White charm honey. That's amazing. Is that the best? That's like the best thing I ever like, ate. <laughs> <laughs> 
Whoa. Look at that. I didn't make it, so I'm not gonna take too much credit for it. <laughs> Sage, I think it's time for the boys to have a turn. Yeah. We're gonna have them dive in. Thanks okay. for trying everything. Maybe they'll try the same stuff, maybe they'll try different, but we'll find out. You can definitely grab a bunch of this. Thank you, Sage. Thank you. All right, so Judah's up here. He's got his plate, he's got the spread. Judah, what do you want? Uh, definitely gotta try some of this honey. Okay, you're going right for the honey, okay? I like that. All right, beautiful. Have to go with the caviar. Pick your cracker though. You gotta pick a cracker too, obviously. I'll try these. Yeah, two of those. Look at that. That's a big body caviar. Yeah. <laughs> Can you handle that? Okay, so Jude is also gonna get something extra special here, right? He's gonna get just a tad bit of edible gold here on his caviar because he was saying the caviar wasn't fancy enough for him. So we have to give him gold, right? <laughs> what is going on here? But I mean, that looks pretty good. That looks amazing. That looks really good. Yeah. All right, you want gold on one and gold, do you have to have gold on both? No, that's want? good. Grab a couple, because Sage just went like nuts on the, on the peaches. That's a homeown sausage, yep, it's a chorizo. Grab a cracker for it. Interesting cracker choice. Not what I would have picked, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just take a big hunk of that. That's awesome. Okay, I like that choice. Okay, so just like Sage, you're gonna get your whole, you're gonna get your own whole sleeve here. Wow, okay, is that incredible. Cool? Is that all right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so take that in the other hand. Take that in the other hand. This one will be yours. How's that? It's very rustic, the presentation, right? Judah's going nuts, by the way. <laughs> Judah's going crazy over here. Is that the white sturgeon caviar? Mm -hmm. It's like pretty creamy, has a nice salinity to it. Yeah. I really like that. This is all finger food, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> take, yeah. You taste the gold? No, no, I'm good. No idea what gold tastes like. That's the right answer. You should not taste the gold. How was that? A little saltier, but uh, it has like a bit of a brininess to it, but I really like it. A little bright too. Okay. He's a pro describing food. I think we should just sub out. Peaches. Wow, that is incredible. That's cool. Like, it reminds me of like a lot of those like Asian candies, but if you made them like the real fruit that it was supposed to be. It's super interesting. Really interesting combo that you're about to die yeah. on. <laughs> Let's see. That sausage is great. Would you know that that's like nicer sausage, that that's homone sausage or not really? I probably wouldn't know it's that I probably wouldn't nicer, either. but I probably wouldn't either. It tastes great. Yeah, super good. You like octopus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how is that? I would not expect something this good from like a canned seafood, but I love the, the richness, the marinade that it's in. The honeycomb. This is exciting, right? Oh, wow. A nice like floral, almost fruity aspect to it. Super interesting choice, right? I'm really happy someone tried this because really, really unique, you know? See what you think, I don't know. I have no idea what that's gonna taste like. <laughs> it takes a while for the wine flavor to kick in, but it's definitely there. And yeah. I think it's like the wine and cheese pairing is right there. You Absolutely. Don't to, you yeah. don't need to go out and get yeah. two separate things. Yeah, we are not letting him drive home. After that cheese, there's no way we're letting him touch his car and getting home like that. All right, amazing, that you was, happy? Yeah, that was wonderful. Amazing, all right, well, thank you for trying. Looks like it's Felix's turn, yeah? Yeah. Let's yeah. do this. All right, Felix, you're up, you ready? Yes, I am. All right, so you're you're from France. Yes, I am. All right, so I like any of the cheese stuff, you're just gonna roast me on it anyway, right? Of course. Okay, okay. All right, I'm just, I'm not gonna say anything. You dive in. Why is there chocolate here? On the charcuterie board? Yeah. That's a good question. I, I don't have a good answer right now, but charcuterie boards I have seen before have chocolate. I like that everyone's getting different stuff here. This is really good. A few more cone almonds, what else? I'll try the, the chorizo. Okay. How about the salmon? The okay. salmon. I would probably go for that. That's from Scotland. I would grab a few pieces of that if you want. Right. Um, a cracker? Good choice. I like that choice. Judah, that's the cracker that I would have probably picked. So I feel like I just got roasted. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably get some prosciutto as well. Prosciutto? Okay. Yeah. Uh, come on. I want to try these, uh, these cheese. The truffle cheese. Yeah. Oh my gosh. See, the French you know what? I, I feel like to. you're the first one to try the truffle cheese. So you know what? We're going to give him the entire home. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. And uh, a little, little peach. Come on, Barry. That's a lot. Trey. Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. Okay. For the honey, you want both the black locust and the white truffle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want both. Okay. Sure. So let's give you both. So I'm gonna first dig into this honey. You're gonna see it just ooze out of there. Mm. And then let's give you a nice big that spoon. Of that. Good. Right? Yeah. Give that a try. Yeah, we got that floral. Um, you agree with Judah on like kind of the flowery floral aspect mm -hmm. thing, right? It tastes really natural. And then while you eat that. Give you a little bit of white truffle honey, which is my personal favorite. If I were to go out and buy probably anything on this tray, I smell more like the um, the honey than the truffle actually. Yeah. You have like the strong flavor of the truffle that's coming first. Yeah. And then you have the sweet flavor of the honey. Really good. Mm. All right. So I'm gonna try the salmon cracker on the cracker. 
nice texture. I'm gonna take another bite. Oh, okay. Good flavor. The cracker is very good as well. Yeah. All right. Let me try this uh, this sausage. Mmm. So good. Yeah. Melt in your mouth, Sal. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think I tried this in France before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just break that. Just crack that thing in half. So this is truffle. This is a truffle cheese. This is All a right. really really nice Go truffle cheese. cheese. See how much of the truffle you got. I don't know. We're going with a lot of truffle on your plate. I can't taste the truffle for now. Weird. But, but it tastes really good like, as a cheese. Yeah. You, you don't taste a lot of the truffle, but it's like, it reminds me like of a Gouda, something like of that. Of a Gouda? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I'm probably guessing you know like a lot more about cheese than I do. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> All right. I have to go for the, the peach. Yeah, yeah. The peach. Everybody's loved the peaches so mm. far. He's thinking. Yeah, it's, it's like mm, very soft, breaking in little piece in the mouth. Okay. I'm gonna try the jamon and I'll then try, uh, I'll try the, the sweet. That's your like last little bit, that's yeah. the sweet. Get some of the fat in there too, right? Because mm -hmm. the fat should melt in your tongue. That's very good. Good flavor, unique flavor, yeah. very intense. You, you feel like it's very, like it's been aged for, for some times. Take a little bite of the chocolate with the mm -hmm. marcona almond. Mm -hmm. There's like really- The almond's very good. Right? Toasted marcona almond, just really, really kind of nutty. Mm -hmm. The Ooh. texture of the chocolate is it's like sandy. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, I've never tested that before. It's, the almond is so good. Yeah. Good combo? Yeah. You were awesome. skeptical, but then you happy? I love it. Good. <laughs> crazy, crazy board. Before you guys all leave, I know you guys are all got to taste different things. I do want to ask kind of each each one of you, before you grab as much as you can and run, um, I want to ask you all, what are your final thoughts on, on this $10,000 charcuterie board? We wanted to kind of set a record here. What are your final thoughts just on this board? This is the extravagance that I dream of. <laughs> so this is going to remain in your dreams yeah. for, for years. I will, I will not forget this. How about you? What do you think, um, Sage? I'm so happy I was able to try the black truffle honey because that's something I never tried before and now I know I love it so something new that I got to experience so I'm happy about that good it's gonna be your new your new go-to yeah. right I loved it. Uh, very unexpected. Which uh, part is unexpected? Just, just the whole everything. Part. I wasn't expecting to see a, a big socket ball like that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't tell you what you were all coming it's to. Great, so yeah. Thank you all again for coming. I appreciate it. Um, again, grab a bunch to go. And uh, thanks for being on the video. Thanks for joining me. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All the crazy goodie bags. Um, actually, before we end the video, there's one more thing I want to say. And I actually thought about this a little bit more after I finished filming. Up to this point, I've really been taking a lot of the money I'm making and putting it right back into the videos for your enjoyment. But I also don't want to be just aimlessly throwing money around, especially when there's so many things out there that could really use it. So yeah, there's many times where I'm just going to want to make you guys all really happy and put out videos that you love and even make you happy in person. But in doing so, I also want to make changes. I genuinely mean that. So given the times that we're in, I have a really great idea. I was scrolling through Instagram recently and found this. There are crazy things going on right now in India. And that's why I've decided to donate every last penny that I make from this video to this cause. And now I'll close out the video. Well, I'm super thankful that I was able to get three random subscribers to come on in here and try what we made today. Now, obviously, I didn't really cook any of this stuff other than, I guess, this baked brie in the middle that none of them seemed to want to try. But I get it. When you're facing up against that compared to hummus Iberico or truffle honey or really nice caviars, I understand. And you know what the funniest part is? I'd say we fit about $9,000 worth of stuff on here. I mean, just from the few honeys we have here, the jamon iberico, all of these cheeses, and then some of the more specialty things like foie gras, that already gets us to about 7,500 bucks. Then of course we have our salmon, all of those amazing cured meats, that kind of thing. All the different breads and crackers shipped from Italy that get us up to that 10,000 mark. But I wanna do more of these videos in the future. And of course it'll be so much easier as the virus continues to ease up. But for now, I wanna thank those three subscribers for taking their time to come today. It's honestly an extremely rewarding feeling for me to be able to give back to people like that. After all, you're the ones that allow me to do what I do. If you liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications icon because you could be next in one of these videos. And I mean that. Quite soon, I'll be roaming the streets and giving out tons and tons of caviar for free. And after that, there's going to be a heck of a lot more. So again, don't forget to subscribe, turn on those notifications, and let's get 100,000 likes on this video. Wouldn't that be awesome? In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. I got a lot of charcuterie to eat, or charcucci, however you say it. I'll see you next time. <laughs>